I remember the moments just before I started to prepare this talk. I had a conversation with a friend and she asked me this question I'm about to ask you. And that's, why is being brave so difficult, yet fear is so easy? Why is being brave so difficult, yet fear, the one thing that holds us back, is so easy? Now my response to her at this point was simple. When being brave feels like your only option, you simply have no other choice but to be brave. Today I have for you four words that I believe will change the next generation. But that story starts with me back in April 2015 when I had the bravest conversation of my life. I'd been keeping a secret. And this was a secret that I wasn't ready or prepared to share with anyone. But that secret was about to define the rest of my life forever. So I couldn't hold on to it any longer. I was about to get exposed. And everyone was going to know what I had been doing. And the last person I was ready or prepared to tell was my mum. I remember the moments just before I picked up the phone to call her. Quite similar to how I'm feeling now. My whole body was shaking. My throat was tight. My eyes had filled with tears. And my whole being was just consumed by shame. I picked up the phone and it started with the usual, hello, how are you, what are you up to? And then I said, mommy, I've got something I need to tell you. And she was like, what? What do you have to tell me? And I just froze. I couldn't bring myself to say it out loud. And then she said, you're pregnant, aren't you? And I just said, yes, mommy. Her words at this point were simple. She simply said, okay, you have to marry him. Now at this point, I was pretty lost and confused. I didn't know if I wanted to marry him myself. And I was quite shocked at my mom's response because she'd never been the kind of parent to force me or make me do anything. So this shocked me. And I guess if you're not from a similar culture or background to me, this might shock you as well. So I wanna tell you a little bit about my mum. My mum first came to the country in the 1980s. She came to London from Sierra Leone to have a bit of life for herself. She'd followed in the footsteps of my grandma who came here in the early 60s, going backwards and forwards, doing secretarial work and cleaning. Now my mum didn't have a clear picture of what she wanted to do or what she wanted to achieve. She just knew that failure was not an option. Education, achievement and success was the only priority. So this therefore meant that boys and relationships were completely off the table. These were never ever topics of discussion, except that you leave boys until you finish your education. But this was a little bit different for me. However, I didn't tell my mom when I was growing up that I had a boyfriend. I didn't tell her that there was a boy that I fancied in my class or that I was seeing someone and it wasn't quite working out. Or that there was a guy, my friend, who I'd been dating for a really long time and we were in love. But that day when I held the phone to my ear, sobbing at everything my life was about to become, me and my mum, for the first time, had the first of very awkward conversations about sex. She said, why didn't you use a condom? And I just remember wanting the whole ground to just swallow me whole. But as much as my mum had some questions for me, I had a few questions for her. Now, at this point, all I knew is that my mum and dad dated back when they were in Sierra Leone. And they had a very fractured relationship from the start. So by the time I was born, my parents weren't together and my dad has been in and out of my life ever since. My parents, however, did go on to have two more children, my younger brother and my younger sister. 
And over the years, my mum would tell us stories about my dad, but there was still so very little that I knew about their relationship. And it was only when I got pregnant myself that I started to ask my mum some questions because I felt like my life was falling into a similar pattern to hers. I felt myself becoming my mum, someone who was so determined to become successful in the eyes of everybody else that she couldn't leave a situation that wasn't right for her. So I asked her, what was it about him that made you keep going back time and time again? Was it because you loved him? Did you think he would change? What did grandma say when you brought him home? Did she want you to stay in that relationship? We scared that people would judge you if you left this man and you started a family with someone else. We scared that you'd be alone or that you wouldn't find love again. These brave yet awkward conversations with my mom formed the foundation for a new level of intimacy and humanity that I had never experienced with my mother before. And for the first time, I didn't just see her as my mom. I saw her as a woman, a young woman, just like me, trying to do the best for her children. And it was at that point I realized that I needed to be brave. I needed to be courageous. And I needed to have an honest conversation with her and tell her, no. No, I won't marry him. And for the first time I uttered these four words I'm about to share with you. It stops with me. Now I have no idea what came over me that day, but what I do remember is that I was tired. I was so tired of performing. I was tired of conforming to these ways of being. And I was tired of letting everything that I was scared of define my life. Now your story might be different to mine, but can you identify with that feeling of being tired? Tired and fed up of living up to the expectations of everybody else, of traditions, of stem back generation after generation, ideas of what your friends have of you, of what your partner has of you, of what society has of you, what they expect you to be. I know for me, I got to a point where being brave just felt like the only option, simply because I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. Now there's a shame researcher and speaker who inspires me greatly, who goes by the name of Brene Brown. And she says that vulnerability sounds like truth and feels like courage. Truth and courage aren't always comfortable, but they are never ever weakness. And I wanna to say to you that if you make the choice to enter in and have brave conversations, if you're choosing to be courageous, you are the greatest sign of strength. And that is never ever a weakness. Earlier I asked you, why is being brave so difficult yet fear is so easy? And I think that's because being brave takes courage. And walking in fear is just comfortable. So over the next five years, I chose to have uncomfortable conversations and enter into uncomfortable spaces, but I did so in the very everyday moments. So this would be when I'd come down to London and I'd be in the kitchen with my mum, helping her to peel the onions and unwrap the Maggie cubes. I would ask her questions. But when I'd go into her room and I'd ask to borrow a pair of socks and I'd just perch on the side of her bed and we'd talk for hours. It would happen when I'd be in Leicester and I'd FaceTime her whilst breastfeeding my daughter or when I'm in the car driving to work or nursery. I can say this as a woman, that there are many expectations upon us of what we're meant to be and how we're meant to behave. I can also say this as a black woman, that there are so many pressures from a cultural perspective of how we're meant to be, lest we bring eternal damnation and shame upon ourselves, our family and our community. But what I learned since those early conversations with my mum in 2015 is that being vulnerable, being honest and being open is hard. It's so hard. It's uncomfortable. It's crippling. It's messy. And it's hella ugly. But my goodness, is it necessary? It's necessary for growth and it's necessary for change. And I guess if I didn't have those early conversations with my mum, I would never have been able to understand life from her perspective. 
I would never have been able to find my voice and I would never have been able to change the path for my daughter. Now, I remember just before we took this picture, my mum was rushing around trying to get us all together to take it. She was so proud of her family. My grandma equally was so proud that we could stand together as four generations of black women. My grandma passed away shortly after we took this picture, but my mum was able to have her fair share of honest conversations with my grandma. So I've made it a little bit of a habit to say those four words anytime I feel myself falling into a pattern of behavior that doesn't feel natural or doesn't feel authentic to me. I simply say, it stops with me. Now my daughter, she's just turned five and she's full of personality, she's full of energy and she's full of sass. And I know that one day she's gonna have some honest questions for me. But more than that, I'm confident that she will grow to be a woman that isn't gonna to conform to a way of doing things simply because that's just how we do things. She will understand that you can ask questions, that it's okay to doubt, that it's okay to be scared and frustrated, and it's okay to want better. And in that process, she will make mistakes, she will fail, but she will also become successful. And she will also begin to change the path, not just for herself, but for her children. So to me, that's how we change the next generation. Stepping out of all that we've once known and stepping into an open and blank space where we have no idea what the outcome is gonna be, but we're still willing to say, it stops with me. Now, my mom actually answered every single one of my questions. She too was brave and she trusted me with her most vulnerable parts. And for that, I am forever grateful. She also accepted that I wasn't gonna marry my daughter's dad, but instead she accepted my way, our way of doing things. Two first time parents choosing to navigate this life as co-parents. So I wanna leave you with a final quote by Brene Brown. And she says, we need more people who are willing to demonstrate what it looks like to risk and endure failure, disappointment and regret. People willing to feel their own hurt instead of walking it out on other people. People willing to own their stories, lives and values and keep showing up. So could you show up, have the brave conversation and change the next generation? Remember, all it takes is those four words. It stops with me. Thank you. <laughs>